Hi, I'm Savannah Cummings, and today we have our dietitians joining us for some time in the kitchen for National Nutrition Month. So, Vitamin Wellness, this is the Lifestyle Medicine Clinic. You can follow us on YouTube and Facebook at Vitamin Wellness. And today in the kitchen, we have Briseida Osborne and Lindsay Dreyer. Hey guys. We're going to take you through some skills to learn how to create tasty meals. And this morning, we're doing breakfast. Um, we'll go through each type of uh, breakfast prep using about the same ingredients but in different ways. And then throughout this week, you'll see lunch and dinner prepared. And our um, recipe will be in the comments after each video. And so tune in this week at Vitant Wellness. Again, it's on YouTube and Facebook. And so we're going to take you through this morning um, three different ways to prepare oats. Okay? Yes. Started. All right, so first we have overnight oats. And one of the great things about overnight oats is we are preparing them when we have no time in the morning. So a lot of us, we've been told by our physician that we need to have oatmeal. Oatmeal does fight cholesterol because of the fiber content, but sometimes there are hidden things in or not things that are present in some products. Not all oatmeal is created equal. So I'm going to take you through the difference between your quick oats versus your old-fashioned oats. And the biggest thing is fiber. So think about the grain of an oat. So an oat is processed, and when it's processed, they've taken all of the good fiber out to make it a quick oat. Well, the quickness was to save us time, but this recipe takes no time in the morning. So it's actually faster than your packet oatmeal. So I really want you to pay attention to how we prep this. We prep it three days ahead of time. There's no added sugar, so our packet oatmeal does have added sugar. A lot of times it is regular, um, regular sugar or even artificial sweetener. So today, no added sugar in this recipe, and we are choosing a dairy-free option using oatmeal, and the yogurt that we have chosen is coconut yogurt. So just a different way to look at some of the things that we would normally put in overnight oats, but we're changing it up a little bit. And then also toppings that can make it kind of a crowd pleaser for everyone in your family. But again, there is no prep in the morning. This is super, super easy and tons of fiber. So the difference in our quick oats versus our old fashioned oats is the fiber content. Fiber helps keep us full and fight, uh, fiber fights our cholesterol. So I'm going to turn over to Lindsay so you can see how to prep this and take a look at the final product. Hey everyone, so we're going to be prepping some overnight oats and like Savannah said, it's a time saver. You prep it on a Sunday, you can prep it for halfway through the week and have your breakfast ready to go. So it's National Nutrition Month, so happy National Nutrition Month. And the theme is personalize your plate. So we are doing, this is a dairy free option for those who have to be dairy free. Um, and then obviously if you don't have to be dairy free, you can just alter the ingredients a little bit, but we're each doing a personalized version of things. So this is really easy to, it's five ingredients. I have our old fashioned oats. I have a fourth of a cup of that. I have a fourth of a cup of oat milk. You can also use almond milk if you don't like oat milk. I have a tablespoon of chia seeds. Chia seeds are great because they help, they have a little bit of fiber and a little bit of protein in them as well and then make any substance that you put it in a little thicker. So personally, I like my overnight oats thick, so this helps thicken it up a little bit. And then I have a teaspoon, a half a teaspoon of maple syrup, and I have a tablespoon of coconut yogurt. So I'm just gonna put all this in a mason jar. You can find these little cute mason jars at Walmart. You can find them pretty much at, pretty much at any grocery store. You can get bigger ones as well if you want a bigger serving. But all of this just goes in the mason jar. So my fourth of a cup of oats, my fourth of a cup of oat milk, I'm going to do the coconut yogurt, and Savannah's going to talk to you a little bit about that. So the coconut yogurt is an alternative, so dairy-free. Yogurt is really great for us. It's great for our gut health, and this is considered a yogurt alternative. So it is plant-based, so if we're following our whole foods plant-based eating, we're using organic coconut milk here, to, and they made yogurt. And if you take a look at it, 
Um, looks just like yogurt, same consistency, and the flavor is really good. And we aren't worried about the flavor of the yogurt per se because we're putting so many different flavors with the oat, um, overnight oats. We don't really need this to be flavored as vanilla or raspberry because you'll see that we're using the actual fruit versus the um, fruit product that's in a lot of our yogurts. Right. And so I put the chia seeds in as well and the maple syrup and then you just stir it together with a spoon and you can have like multiple mason jars and be doing all these at the same time and measure everything out. And it's obviously going to look thin right now, but as you let it set, it will thicken overnight. You can, if you don't have time to do it overnight, if you want it later in the day, these can set for four hours and they'll thicken as well. So shortest time, four hours, longest time overnight. And then obviously you can have it for the week. So these last in the fridge about three to four days. Um, they're still good up to three to four days. So you can make them for three to four days. I'm just gonna put the lid on and this would go in the fridge. And then take a look at the consistency that we prepped last night. So if you look, really filling, it expands. And so this is a lot of food. And the smaller jar is appropriate for our portion size because we're controlling our carbohydrates throughout this session. Mercedes is gonna talk to us um, about carbohydrate controlled um, portions next. So if you look, we've got a small portion and then we have it thickened overnight. Again, we prepped this last night. We have three of them prepped for this week. No time in the morning required. So now let's put a few toppings. So you know, most of our yogurt um, is flavored and that's a lot of added sugar. And when we're trying to reduce our carbohydrates or reduce our sugar content, Start looking at the added sugar. Added sugar is a great place to look on the label to see how much added sugar is in the product. And so instead of having, having added sugar from maybe a fruit product that they have created for yogurt, we're gonna use the fresh berries. So we chose to do something kind of like a peanut butter and jelly. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna use peanut butter and a few raspberries on top of the overnight oats. So the peanut butter is giving us um, fiber and protein, helping us with staying full, gives us the good fats that we need to keep us full. The importance of our breakfast is to carry us to lunch. So a lot of us are skipping breakfast due to time or having no time. This is a lot faster than going through the drive-through. And the thing with this peanut butter is I always talk to patients about peanut butter. Peanut butter should be one or two ingredients, peanuts or peanuts and salt, that should be it. There should not be molasses, sugar, palm oil, stuff like that. So look at That's your, your added sugar. Yes, look at your label for your peanut butter. So I did, I did a half a tablespoon of peanut butter. You do, um, and that's our plant-based protein as well. And to bulk this up, since there's not the protein from the milk and the yogurt, the peanut butter, and then I'm going to do some pumpkin seeds for some crunch, just to give it a little crunch, because some people like um, a little texture with their oatmeal. So I'm going to do a tablespoon or so of pumpkin seeds right on top for a crunch. And these are um, plant, these are unsalted, they're unsalted. And then we're gonna do a mixture of, we have some blackberries and raspberries, which is the peanut butter and jelly part. So we're just gonna do some blackberries, about a tablespoon of blackberries and raspberries. And there you have it. And so in one jar, we have our antioxidants, we have fiber, we have good fats. And this is plant-based and completely dairy-free um, and gluten-free naturally because we're using oats. So always remember to choose your whole um, old-fashioned oats over quick oats, especially when you're eating them this way because you're getting your more fiber. Right. And then next we're gonna um, jump to Briseida. So she's gonna show us our um, tropical oatmeal bake. This is fantastic, it is beautiful presentation. Um, and one of the great things about it is make ahead. So you can prep this on Sunday, um, it can also go in your freezer, and then it stays in your refrigerator up to five days, and it is absolutely beautiful. So take a look at our ingredients. Um, things that are this pretty just taste better. So Mercedes kind of give you a, a little bit of overview of the ingredients and show you a skill to um, select your mango, how to cut your mango, because Personally, I had trouble when I first started cutting mango. It was just everywhere. So now she's going to give us um, some instruction on how you select it in the grocery store. And this is our carb-controlled meal. And you're going to see plenty of carbohydrates present, 
But your portion at the end, completely carb controlled, great for um, those of us with diabetes or maybe pre-diabetes or gestational diabetes, you're watching out for your carbohydrate content at one sitting. So for Seda, I'll let you kind of go through and show how this works. Thank you, Savannah. All right, so we're doing a tropical oatmeal bake today. Uh, mangoes are one of my favorite fruits. I grew up eating them, so that's why I probably love them. So when it comes to mangoes, when you look at a mango, it doesn't tell you anything. Absolutely nothing, because this one's red, but it's actually not as ripe as this one that's still very green. We have to do, give it a squeeze, okay? I like my green personally, um, and my dad loves them really, really ripe. So his, when you squish it, when you press on it, it will bounce back. Okay, that's the first part. So selecting it, really just touch it and see um, if it bounces back or if it stays firm and it gets more green. So when we cut a mango, always wash it. Remove the, the stickers, of course. Okay. So it depends how you're going to use it next. I personally like to cut them in half. And also remember something, the pit isn't straight. It looks more like, it actually mimics this angle right here. When we cut through it, don't cut down, cut at an angle around it. Just like so. So if you see right here, I cut at an angle to make sure I got most of that meat and left the pit intact. So now what we're gonna do is grab our knife and we are going to make cuts in it one way, and we're going to flip it, or rotate it, and make cuts the same way to form cubes. Just like that. And all you do, you pop it, and then you have your mango. It's easier to either cut an actual cube off of it, so it's still green if you recall. Right there. Or, you can just go ahead and bite it and Tear it apart with your teeth. It looks really pretty. Um, it's great for presentation, but most importantly, it has tons of vitamin A and vitamin C. Um, vitamin C in the form of beta carotene, so it's actually aid with your sight. Now, in this case, I'm not going to just remove it from the. Looking for a peeler, Savannah. Can you help me find mm -hmm. one? Thank you. So, what we're going to do is actually just peel the skin and then do the same thing where we cut it at an angle and then cube it as we would with anything else. Well, while we do that, let's go ahead and just cut it with our knife, or peel it with our knife. Now the skin, oh thank you Savannah, the skin is edible. Personally, I love the skin, it has extra fiber, um, has nice texture, and sometimes if your potato peeler cuts it too thick, it has a nice taste too. Okay, so we're just gonna... And so, Rosetta, I know that we're, we now know how to select it. Mm -hmm. What, other than this recipe, how would you consume a mango? Like, what other ways can we use it? Because I know it's so good for us. Yes. Vitamin A, vitamin C, so how would, what else would we use it in? So, a popular way of using these savanna is to make smoothies. Okay. Yeah. Half a mango has 30, or I'm sorry, half a mango has 15 grams of carbohydrates. So, if you uh, have diabetes or simply are being carb conscious, um, go ahead and add it to a smoothie. They're great in salads as well. Can't go wrong because it's a snack. Uh, always pair your snacks with protein, don't forget, to aid the satiety and to help digest it slower. So here we have our mango. All we're going to do is cut it in strips, just how we did earlier. And then same this way. Everywhere. And we're actually going to use this for our recipe this morning. So I'm going to add it to our plate of other fruit that we have. So to go for our recipe. And in your, in your bowl of fruit, you have raspberries, blackberries, blueberries. So again, antioxidants, mm -hmm. fiber, a lot of fiber in our berries. And then this gives you a lot of sweetness without having to add sugar that would be in a lot of our other recipes. We would add sugar or brown sugar or something. So. That's right. So Savannah said blueberries, raspberries, um, raspberries, blueberries, and blackberries. Really anything you want, any fruit you like. If you don't like any of these, peaches are great, pineapple is great. Um, so really whatever you like, you can use. 
So, Savannah, now we're going to make our oatmeal bake. Okay? You gonna assist me? Sure. Perfect. So, we're full. The great thing about this recipe, too, guys, it's a one bowl mess. You don't have to use eight. Well, besides, oh, I love that. Yes, it's versatile, it's easy, um, and you don't have to worry about washing 10 dishes. This is just for presentation, of course. At home, I wouldn't do this. So, first, we're going to add three cups of oats to our big bowl. And Savannah said, because the old fashioned had more protein, or more fiber, so we're using. So it's going to be three cups. Oh, it is? Yes. Okay. Yep, all three cups. Perfect. I always add the fruit last, just because I don't want to damage it, especially because they're berries. So we're going to add two eggs. Okay. This right here is a little bit of, it's two tablespoons of maple syrup, plus one tablespoon of water. As you, as you may know, um, any kind of sweetener is very high in carbohydrates. One tablespoon has about 15 grams, which is one choice. So by adding a little bit of water, we're diluting it, but it's still the sweetness that we need. And it allows it to mix through. So if you think about it, when you dilute it with water, it probably stretches out over the recipe a little bit further. Okay, exactly right. Uh, a teaspoon of vanilla extract, a teaspoon of baking powder, my favorite, cinnamon, Recipe calls for about one teaspoon. I use more than two. Now, this right here is also used as a binder and a sweetener. It's a smashed banana. If you don't have a banana, you can actually use applesauce as well. Now, for say, people have been telling me that they're not eating bananas because they're too hot in carbohydrate or sugar. Yes. But give me your take. So, you know, National Nutrition Month is, you know, learning new skills. And but we've all been taught our entire lives to to eat fruit. And so really pay attention to what we're doing with our fruits because fruits are so good for us. Yes, they have carbohydrates, but they have way more great things about them than the negativity with the carbohydrate. Because as you can see, Versace is gonna show you portion is really what matters. That's exactly right. It's not what we eat, it's how much we eat, which I really like that um, saying because it's, it's true. So if you look at this banana, it's um, quite large. <laughs> this one's a little bit smaller. If you, can, if you think about a banana being about five inches um, long, this is about 15 grams of carbohydrates. This is ideal if you carb count or count your choices carbohydrate-wise. This is more like 30. So if your goal for a meal is 30, this is your entire um, carbohydrate choices for that meal. So make sure you select the smaller ones. Now, this all you can find, half of it is also 15 grams of carbohydrates. So and the rest of it you can freeze. Yeah. So, you know, some people will say, I don't have anyone to share the half a banana. What am I going to do with it? And I don't want to waste any food. So we want to make sure that when you, if you use only half of it, you can put it in the freezer and then use it for your smoothie the next day. That's right. And finally, one of my personal favorite things in the world is Fair Life milk. Uh, most dairy milk has about 12 grams of sugar. Fair Life only has six. It has a half the sugar and twice the protein, eight versus 13 grams. In this case, we're going to use one and three quarters of a cup. Thanks, Anna. I lost her. Transition. So all you're going to do for the final step is add three quarters of a, or one and three quarters of a cup of milk. Now, if you do not like dairy, if you um, don't tolerate it very well, Fairy Life also has lactase, which breaks down the lactose for you. So it's very gentle in your GI tract. And then we used the oat milk in the previous recipe, so you could definitely use oat milk or almond milk here, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. I, I like Fairy Life except the protein content. Right. Um, almond milk tastes delicious and it's great, but, but it it's has very low. It's only one gram of protein. Exactly. This ensures that we have some source of protein in it. And protein helps balance the rise in blood sugar. So the purpose of having the protein present, and we keep talking about good fats and having plenty of fiber, is when it keeps us full. So protein keeps us full, fiber keeps us full, as does um, good fats. Mm -hmm. And so, but protein specifically, when your blood sugar is rising from the carbohydrate, the protein helps the spike not be as severe. Exactly right. Our last step, we're gonna add our fresh berries and mango. And this is just absolutely beautiful. Oh. Can y'all see that? Beautiful. And we eat with our eyes, y'all, so this is such a perfect way for you to come with me to eat more fruit. So last, this, this is only if you like walnuts. I love walnuts. All kinds of nuts have um, plenty of fats that helps vitamins A, D, E, and K be better absorbed. So we're going to add half a cup of that. 
And now this is ready to be baked. So all you gotta do is grease your eight by eight or nine by nine inch pan. Add your mixture. Now this will go in the oven at 350 degrees for about 35 to 45 minutes, depending on how you like your oatmeal. Or these are more bars. Perfect. So we'll go in the thank you, Savannah. And through the magic television, here we have a bake. Thank you, Savannah. So a ninth of this only has 30 grams of carbohydrates, which is really ideal for a breakfast. So we're gonna cut up our serving. And we're making this ahead. So, you know, the night before, definitely you can make this on a Saturday and have it for all week. Also, it can go in the freezer. It freezes beautifully because when you um, can pop a piece in your toaster oven, one thing I love to do is do the portion itself. So, like, if we wanted to do this ahead of time, let it completely cool, then you could wrap up your individual portions and pop them in the freezer, and then you've done your meal prep. That's right. And a good for or months. a great brunch because it is absolutely <laughs> It will stay fresh in your freezer for three months uh, or in your refrigerator for about five to seven days. And Savannah, that is our carb control oatmeal bake bar. Fantastic. Perfect. So now we're going to have Lindsay join us. And so Lindsay is making banana. Quick, only five to six ingredients. If you notice, all of the things that we've put in today are, are, are natural ingredients or clean ingredients, meaning they have very few ingredients in their ingredient list. Right. So when you're looking at a package of raspberries, the only ingredient is raspberries. If you look at the peanut butter, Lindsay said, let's make sure that it only has peanuts because all of those other additives are things that we don't need. They add extra fat. Sometimes they add, most of the time, extra sugar. And so when we think about clean eating, all of that, that only means just looking at your ingredient list and let's do less ingredients. So there's five to six ingredients, super easy, kid friendly, and it's plant-based protein. You're gonna look great at breakfast. And then remember throughout the week, we're gonna do lunch and dinner. So I'm gonna let Lindsay kind of show you how she's gonna make these. And we've used oats in all three of our ingredients. Right, and that's that's also the thing is stretching your food across more than one application. I know a lot of us like to buy in bulk, and if we don't know what to do with the other, then we end up, it ends up sitting in our cabinet and going bad, or we end up throwing it away. So all three of these O recipes are easy to make, and I'm going to do a pancake recipe because I know a lot of parents, I have a lot of parents that come and see me, and they want a breakfast that their kids can help with and enjoy on the weekends as well. So like Savannah said, I'm going to be using mostly whole ingredients, all in whole ingredients for this. You can obviously buy the pancake mix, but this gets your kids involved. It's quick and easy, and they taste good too. So and I'm, Lindsay, what would the pancake mix have in it? Because we just talked about clean ingredients. So right. what would, when you buy just a box pancake that says add water? Right, so that's going to have more salt and more added sugar. Um, and it's depending on how long it's been on the shelf, we don't necessarily know how long it's been there. Um, so certain things like baking soda and stuff in certain pancake mixes will go bad after a certain amount of time. So I always like to say, look at your expiration dates too. But I'm controlling the ingredients. I'm controlling the flavor, I'm controlling the salt, and I'm controlling the sugar with this. Okay. So the what do we normally have with pancakes? Syrup. Syrup, everyone's favorite thing. So that is, like Forsay was saying about um, a sweetener, usually two tablespoons of maple syrups, like 50 grams of carbohydrates, or, or 25, 25 grams of carbohydrates, excuse me. So that's about a little over one carb serving. So and I'm, one of the and one of the things about maple syrup, it's really good and it you know it's tasty, but it packs a powerful carbohydrate punch. And so it's really hard for us to use um, instead of having syrup. If you're accustomed to using a lot, of course start using less. But right. she's going to show you that you may not need it at all. So to get started, I'm going to make like a blueberry compote to go on on top of these oat pancakes. So I'm just going to use a half a cup of blueberries and obviously if you were making a large amount of this you could use more. We'll put the recipe on there and then you can double it if you want to store some. I'm only using a half a teaspoon of maple syrup so compared to what most of us put on our pancakes which is probably what like two tablespoons? If not more. If not more. So a half a teaspoon and then just to bump up the blueberry flavor and give it a little freshness I'm going to do a zest of a lemon. 
So you just need a microplane or if you have a box grater and with, a, with zesting a lemon, you wanna go down before it gets to the white part. The white part is bitter of a lemon. So you wanna be very careful not to zest in one place too long. And Lindsay, could we use the same um, skill that remember Brisada did where she kind of um, water down the maple syrup that exactly. we needed to a little bit. Exactly. So you could add you could add about a teaspoon to the maple syrup to have it go a little further in this recipe of water, and the water will cook out of this too. So that's a good idea. Okay. And could we use lemon juice? What's the difference in one to juices? The lemon zest has a more pungent flavor. You need less of it than the juice to give it that strong lemon flavor. And I think the lemon zest just makes the blueberries look pretty. Um, but either or you could use. So this will cook down. Um, my compo, I like to be chunky, so I'm just going to mash it as we go. And it's going to cook down on um, medium to low heat for about 10, 15 minutes. You can let it go longer too, um, but this is a quick version of this, okay? And through the magic of TV, I have some here that's already cooked down. It kind of looks like a jam jelly that we're gonna put on the pancake. But a lot less sugar. Right. So for the pancakes, what we're going to do is like um, Savannah said, we're gonna start it in a blender. So this has about five or six ingredients. That's all you need. So this was a cup and a half of oats, of our, um, of our old fashioned oats. I put it in the blender and blended it down to make an oat flour. Or if you have oat flour, but I just took what I had, the oats already, and made it into a flour. And so that's much cheaper than yes. buying the oat flour. For sure. So yes, we have these convenience items already prepared in our grocery store section. Now, would you find oat flour in the baking section or gluten-free or both? Both. So okay. you can find it in the baking section now and it will be in the gluten free a plant-based recipe so we had dairy free first then Brisea did carb control I'm doing a plant-based oat recipe so we're going to be using a banana in this recipe as well and is this in the place of like egg or butter yes. or something so okay. this is in place of the the egg and the banana so this uh it, in place of the egg and the oil so this will be one full banana going in this makes about um four to six pancakes depending on the size so the one banana even though it's a larger one it's going to make more than one pancake so then I'm going to do, I'm using oat milk for this again. I'm using a cup of oat milk. Again, you could use um, Fair Life if you didn't want to make it plant-based or dairy-free, or you could use um, almond milk as well, whatever you have on hand. Then I'm going to use a tablespoon of maple syrup. And again, this is stretched upon, you can use ha half of that and put some water in it and stretch it. But again, this is making five or six pancakes. I'm doing a teaspoon of baking powder because that's going to be the leavening agent for the pancakes. You still need a leavener. And then a tablespoon of flaxseed and a fourth of a teaspoon of cinnamon. The cinnamon will give it a nice flavor to it. And this is ground flaxseed. You can find this also in the baking section. It does is available organic. Flaxseed flax is so um, great. It's a good, it gives you good fats. It gives you some protein. It keeps you full. So yes. again, this is breakfast. Breakfast should carry us to lunch. And what if lunch is delayed due to being busy or a meeting? And so we should feel full after this because of how much fiber we have included in all of these recipes. So I'm just going to blend this really quick. until the banana is broken down and it is a liquid mixture and so I have my bowl of oat flour here and I'm just going to dump the liquid mixture into the oat flour again super easy this was five or six ingredients the kids can help with this and then I'm just going to stir the liquid into the oat flour and this will thicken pretty quickly so I have my um, pancake pan on heating up and I'm just going to spray it with some non-stick spray. And we want this on medium heat. Now, with the first pancake, does everyone know the first pancake thing? What happens with the first pancake? The it's, chef eats it. The chef eats it, because it always is one of those things that the first pancake's like the tester or whatever. So always allow yourself um, the pan to heat up, otherwise the first pancake's gonna be really pale. Okay, so this batter looks like a pancake batter. It smells really good because of the cinnamon. Okay, and then I'm just gonna dollop. 
We're going to make these about four inches. Depending how, on how big you like them. This will make, you can freeze these also if you make too many. This, this should make around six. So if you're not going to use all six, you can freeze them as well. And that way you don't need to buy frozen pancakes. You can make your own and then freeze them and then just pop them in the, the toaster or the microwave to heat them up. So these will cook for about um, two to three minutes on each side. With pancakes, when they start to bubble around the outside, that's when you know they're ready to flip. You don't want to try to flip it too early and then all the batter goes everywhere. So you want to wait till you get a nice bubble around the outside and you can see the edge is starting to get a little brown. So we're going to wait and do that. And then our blueberry compote is cooking away still and it smells delicious. You could also use, instead of blueberries, um, berry season's coming up, you could pick fresh raspberries or blackberries and make the same thing. It doesn't have to be blueberries. Um, but we're also adding in some more antioxidants with adding in that component instead of all the maple syrup. So we're just going to give these a nice little flip because they're bubbling around the outside. And you just want to make sure this should be on medium heat. We're going to give them another minute just to firm up. But in terms of the ingredients, that was quick and easy. Again, it take, should take 10-15 um, minutes to prep this and then you have them for the week. So I think our biggest message here is personalizing your plate. We did three personalized oatmeal recipes and you can figure out which one works for you in that given week. And we're going to take a closer look at our maple syrup. So two tablespoons, so that's two of these, 27 grams of carbohydrate. What we've chosen to do is use the maple syrup just to sweeten the berries because, you know, berries can be bitter or um, depending on the time of year, they're sweeter in the summer around um, eastern North Carolina. Right. But what we've done is we've used a little bit of it for a big recipe. If you are pouring this maple syrup over top, imagine how many carbohydrates we're putting when we just pour. Mm -hmm. So I would challenge you to say, okay, if I'm using syrup currently and I want to use less, start using your tablespoon and measure what you're using. And then just having the number in your head, imagine if we're using eight tablespoons. Ooh. It's a lot of carbohydrates at one time. If we reduced it to two, which is the serving size, sometimes the serving size on the label can help us decide how much of this we should have. This can help us to make a really good decision. I love that we're diluting it in the tropical oatmeal bake, and then we're also using it to sweeten the berries, but you'll notice that you're not using this entire compote for just you. This right. is for all of um, the pancakes that we prepare. So I'm just flipping these, and these are nice and golden brown. They look like regular pancakes, which is great. And one of the things about these recipes, especially this one, affordability. So yes. we have we have made our own oat flour, and we've used a banana instead of eggs and oil. And so we saved a lot of money with this um, recipe for sure. Right. Because think about this. What do you think the individual portion would cost? Maybe a dollar. Maybe. For two pancakes, yes. Yeah. So a dollar for one person. What is the the you know the number one drive through? It's two for two or um, two for four, depending on what you're buying. This is a lot cheaper than our fast food um, breakfast options. Okay, then we're just gonna serve these up. So a serving size would be two, and we're getting, like she said, more fiber than a box pancake mix and more protein as well than a box pancake mix. And then we're just going to plate this, and we're just going to take our compote and stretch it on all these pancakes. And that is what is for breakfast this morning. So just in summary, I hope that you guys have enjoyed our little cooking session. And this week, um, National Nutrition Month, uh, the theme overall for the month is personalize your plate. And this week is week three, and it's learn skills to create tasty meals. And the skills that we've gone over today, one is meal prep, um, prepping your food ahead of time, prepping three days in advance, taking the oatmeal bake and putting it in a portion, popping it in the freezer. Um, Mercedes shared with us choosing a mango, choosing fresh fruit, how to do it, the um, how to prepare it, how to cut it, and then also that tropical oatmeal bake was make ahead 
keeps five days in the refrigerator and fresh in the freezer. And then with Lindsay's um, pancakes, we showed you how to use blueberries instead of syrup and how to prepare um, a really beautiful presentation to keep you full. So this week um, we will carry you through lunch and dinner. So tune back to Facebook or YouTube for the Vitant Wellness page. And um, we're also going to have some of our old recipes from uh, of previous times in our test kitchen are available online. And our recipes will be in the comments section. So um, we'll see you later on this week. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for joining us, guys.